All, All right. Later. Oh. All right, guys. Welcome back to Wednesday Night Standard here at GameSwap in Mason, Ohio. Brought to you by Top Tech Productions. Recap. My name is Patchnar Savage, and I'm joined here by Justin Blackburn. There we go. Hi. P penis egg? P P Pinus egg? Uh, they have sub cheered. Yeah. Thank they, you very much. They subscribe subscribed last Wednesday, and nice. Uh, we had a we had a debate on how to say their names. Yeah. As well. So uh, if we Thanks can get a cheers. confirmation on the correct pronunciation of your name, that I, would be dope. I thought it was Pina Seg, like Pina Colada, and then with an S there. And Maybe the word egg. But anyway. We have here, we have Grixis again. I'm assuming this is Grixis Midrange or Grixis Energy. Again, but we have a very different opponent. Instead of playing against the aggro deck of the format, it's played against one of the control decks in the format in Doug Nelson on Blue-White Approach. Um, I believe Alex is on uh, Energy. Grixis Energy? Okay. That's what he was playing last time I saw him anyway. That's always a solid choice. Did pretty well the GP this weekend. I think it had, what, two copies on top eight? I believe so. I don't know what you're asking me. Uh, oh, it's supposed to be uh, Pingus Eggman, but he's not allowed to say that. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Also, uh, we weren't necessarily here for this, but Druidic69. Good job. Better better to be lucky than good. Those that don't read chat, he pulled a Scarab God in his random pack he bought today. Neat. Oh, uh, that is every pack buyer's dream. Speaking of chat, uh, Logan Reinhardt said hi earlier. Oh, that was much earlier. I, I'm sorry, Logan Reinhardt, <laughs> if you're still listening, you're uh, still watching. I can't imagine he would be because I'm here. I I am not sitting by the computer. I do not have control of chat. Uh, this computer is very laggy. So I I blame I one Justin Blackburn. Of chat. Oh, uh, you can blame me all you want. I will. It's still Matthew's fault. So this <laughs> <laughs> now Blue White Approach is a deck that I actually do have a lot of experience with. Um, this is a hand that is almost very good for Doug. The only thing he really needs is a second blue source to pair with this disallow in his hand. Wow. Yeah. Uh, he's got the he's got a Gear Hulk, which is an interesting main deck having Gear Hulks. Ooh, my God. And he got it. He is a good Magic player. He ripped it exactly <laughs> what he needed off the top. He's ready. He to knows how to play a control deck. Yeah, so this is a matchup that is fairly good for you game one. You A lot of your remo removal is turned on, uh, and your wraths are good, and a lot of their removal is turned off. They don't have a lot of counter spells in their uh, main deck, so your win condition is pretty safe. Games two and three is where this is going to get really interesting, get uh, a lot worse for Doug. Uh, he's going to have his opponent board in things like negate our... Oh my god, he had a sensor in his hand? I didn't even see the sensor I, I in his hand. I think he cycled it when he got... When he got oh, okay. cast that. That's insanity. Also, would you would you cycle cast that? Like I assume Doug knows what Alex is playing, but would you Yeah, he so you're if you're he doesn't have any really big threats that you really need to deal with that much. The only thing that he really has is things like Scarab God that cast out's really good against. Everything else you can clean up with wraths, but like settle the wreckage, like, fumigate. Would you would you cycle it like that if you didn't know what Alex was playing? I don't know, you you're probably better at control than I am. So he was looking for early interaction. So I would have, yes. Uh, okay. I don't think... He really wasn't a place where he really needed the cast out. Yeah. Um, also, cast out's not that great against the format right now. It's not? Okay. Um, like, so it's good against Scarab God, but, and it's good against Planeswalkers. But Doug had the counter spell in his hand for anything like that. Ooh, and now he gets to play f land 5, play search, and hold up either Essence Scatter or Disallow. Oh. That's pretty gross. Man, I should start playing this deck again. Uh, no, thank you. Why not? I I wasn't a huge fan of the deck. Like, well, that's great. I do think it's pretty good. Honestly, I also found it kind of annoying. Oh, we have a glimmer of genius at the end step. Is it Grixis Control? Uh, yeah, it, it should oh, be Grixis so Energy. We don't, so there's differences between Grixis Energy and Grixis Control. Is there? Grixis Energy is a mid range deck. Grixis Control is a can like a more slower control deck. We saw main deck Whirler Virtuoso, so it's possible that he is playing uh, playing Energy. It's also possible that he's playing Control still. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, can we get that other Energy? Yeah, let's get an there. Energy it should, for it this should, man. It should be there. Doug, you don't actually need your Energy. Why are you hogging the Energy counter? There we go. And the, he still needs that die. 
That's like the thing that always. Oh, we have a Chandra here that's going to meet a they disallow. Disallow. That's, not, that's something that always, t for some reason, tilted my opponents. So whenever I tracked my energy in blue, when I was playing blue white approach, because it doesn't matter, just a hundred percent does not matter. I mean, you're still supposed to, right? Oh yeah, you're supposed to. Actually, technically, they are not supposed to be using dice anymore to track track their energy. Yeah, we do that for the camera's purposes. This is not but a competitive RGL. That is true. Still, I mean, but yeah. So if you guys are playing these standard tournaments, know that you are technically not allowed to uh, do that. Use your boogie board. You, use your boogie board. Use your life pad. Or in carve it in stone. Like a real adult. That sounds like a lot of work. That that is your problem. But yeah, so this is this game is really set up in Doug's favor right now. He flipped his search. He's got counter spells for any creatures. The only thing that could really go bad for him is if Alex plays something like a uh, another Chandra Planeswalker, maybe like an Angroth. I don't know if Alex is playing that, I but that'd be good here. I actually am pretty sure he is playing Angroth. Um. Oh, so he's playing Angroth. That was just me, like. Pulling that out of my ass. We have Greek Gear Hulk Glimmer. Seems fine. Into Gear <laughs> Hulk <laughs> Glimmer. So Gear Hulk Glimmer met by Gear Hulk Glimmer. This is how real men play magic. I thought magic it was just casting the... lightning bolt over it. No, over. magic the way Richard Garfield intended, right here. I, I, I he force spiked my winter art. What do you expect me to do? <laughs> like So this is one of the reasons I think uh Doug probably I don't think he needed to cycle that third cast out. I think that was pretty aggressive. Got another Gear Hulk. Another Gear Hulk. Wow, this is a very Gear Hulk heavy blue white approach list. Um, I mean, how many do you think he's playing? Two or three? Uh, I would guess. Well, he's at least playing playing two. If you're playing two, might as well play the three. Card's very powerful. Uh, yeah, I guess you're right there. Um, what does it hit besides glimmer and counter spells? Does it actually hit anything else? Uh, it hit. I mean, what else is there to hit? I don't know. I'm. I'm, not, I'm what else do you need like, to hit, man? Uh, that. Also we have a braid true. here. We have, so Alex is just the bigger version of the mid range deck. Yeah. Playing the gear hulks, playing the glimmers. Yeah, he's playing siphoners. Uh, yeah, we have essence scatter here, which is always nice. And then we are. I'm guessing we're gonna see a search activation on the end step. Oh. oh. The double essence scatter hit draw from Doug. Uh, is he gonna? Oh, he's going to get a Gear, gear Hulk Hulk's essence scatter. Even better. Seems good. Even better. That's that's gross. This is why I don't like blue-white control. Like, I mean, I, I, I have to respect the deck. You mm -hmm. can't with how well this deck plays. Yeah, this is, in my opinion, the best game one deck in the format. Um, I would I would very much agree with that statement. Um, and see, this is one of the reasons why I didn't like the cycling of the third cast out. I think cast out is still a very good card in this matchup. It's a card you want to have access to. And if this turns from, with cast out, this goes from a four turn clock to a ter two turn clock. Yeah, there is, I mean, there's no enchantment interaction. In, in Grixis, no, either, not at in all. In either of the de these decks, right? Well, Doug has his own copies of cast out. Now we see essence scatter number three. It's not actually number three, but the third one cast this game. It resolved? Why did it resolve? What did it scatter? Oh, that... Um... That's a good question. Now he just... I mean, like, it's not a huge deal, but... Is... is the, Your essence scatters aren't gonna hit that much else. Is Doug just heart set on... Winning through the long way? I guess he is. So, he's gonna cast a glimmer here. Like, he's still a far ahead. I'm not saying this is, like, necessarily a punt from Doug... But I do think it is a misplay. I don't think you need to both glimmer and activate his Kanto this turn. Is that like a punt count 1.5? No, it's not It's not a punt. It's just a misplay. Um, now, yeah, if you want to answer this, you can just fumigate. That, that but it seems much worse. I like having the ability to both kill him via Torrential Gear Hulk's attacking and approach. That forces him to interact on a lot of different level levels that are hard for him to interact with. Duck is, has a lot of... They both have lots of lands. Well, yeah. This is a blue mirror. You ever played blue mirror? I you play, play a lot of lands. I yeah. <laughs> so do I. I play blue mirrors all the time. <laughs> but you also play standard. But I do the, the blue, other blue problem, mirrors in both formats. The other problem here is that I never play control decks. I play, Fair. I play like... Aggro and mm -hmm. I guess my modern deck is mid range. It's, it's still more. It's still more aggro. So I don't know what Doug's waiting for. I think it was very safe to approach that turn. You don't care if he counters it. There's not much that you can really that you really want to. Is he just trying wait. to wait? 
why do you, you this is not a value deck that's a control deck that's true you have a card that literally says win the okay. game in your hand a lot of people use that as a metaphor this is not a metaphor it says win the game on the card battle of wits also says win the game you're not wrong I tend to do that. So I think now uh, now that Doug has decided he's going to take this route, I think he should probably just be fumigating here. Who's that cast out that he... Yeah, he should take that cast out. Yeah, it's non-creature, non-land, Doug. You can take enjoyments. I think Doug might be slightly newer, newer to this deck, it feels like. I, I've noticed him staying away from magic, and then he, he's like getting back into it. So. Okay. So we're going to take cast out here. Now we can go back to our beat you down with your Hulk plan. Yeah, but... Which is he, safer because we get, we get to live up counterspell. And then, so... I mean, this is still fine for Doug. He's still very far ahead. Uh, He can still... He's going to cast cast out this turn on the gear Hulk. Does Alex have any kind of counterspell or anything? That no, doesn't look like it. But you saw at least one copy of Harness Lighting in Alex's hand... And that's why I, I like the version of approach that has no creatures in game one. Uh, just now, like, Doug's going to probably have to win this game via just using approach the, anyway. Is that the mill one? Yeah, Ibn Rivulet is the mill land. The mill does are, oh, we have Moment of Craving into Harness Lightning. That's, that's, uh, that's interesting. I mean, I, yeah, he's going to kill one of them. No, but, I, I just mean, like, Doug probably has a counter spell i mean he doesn't oh if you're doug there's no reason to counter this i mean you, you say sure and continue on with your life really you don't counter the harness i don't think you need to that's he's two for one himself you still have a five six is bigger than anything on the board and you just i to cast approach this no, turn i didn't know he had this low, so. i mean so you can counter this and still cast approach this turn but i don't know i thought approach was a sorcery i mean it is a sorcery but you still right you this still is cast Doug's it turn i'm this is combat. Yeah. Now, like, we don't even have anything else we want to hold up. Just, I mean, has just approach. Scatter, like, just just approach. Yeah, approach is just your best. If he resolves a creature, you have fumigate in your hand, so you don't care. Even if he resolves something like the scarab god, you have fumigate in your hand, so you can fumigate. And then you have essence scatter to back up that. So. Uh. I'm not sure. Adam, he moment of craving. If you didn't notice, so that G Gear Hulk was a three four, because has one energy, gains three, goes to four, deals four damage, kills a three four. Yeah. So Doug is taking the uh, pure control out instead of the more like quote unquote combo there's, control there's the approach. Um. Oh, Adam, you are right, actually. He still is left with one energy. Um, Sorry, Adam. You're, you're right. I'm wrong. Well, technically, I wasn't wrong, but I just was unclear about what's going on. I mean, like... He should just have one energy left, is, is what Adam is saying. Is that, like... I mean, that's on Alex's part, right? Because he just paid one too many. So, there is no reason to... He didn't pay any energy whatsoever. The harness lighting was countered. Oh, was it? Okay, yeah. never mind. What... What reason should he have for not having energy? What did he use it on? Oh, he's, I, he's I, no way to use that I one energy he had. I thought it resolved. No, I the harness lightning harness. didn't resolve. I thought he countered the uh, Vona's. The moment of craving? Yeah. Oh, maybe he did. Because that, that gains Alex's life. I feel like that's just kind of better to... Then, okay, then the sequencing was really weird there. Did like, Alex might have held priority and done that. that okay, that's just confusing. Like... and Don't do that. I guess <laughs> magic players love to, like look complex but it's like what are you doing in that case i mean yeah did you see that gear hulk in response gear hulk it's true like that's and Al alex is just getting the beat down i don't really know why he swung with both those stoppers i feel like he should have left one back i mean he's just he's dead like he's basically down the crack back there's not, not much, much he get, gets him out of this at all so that's a scare god and even if he does answer these two lethal five sixes doug just has double approach in his hand which I would have cast, like, this game should have been over already, like, mm -hmm. about five turns ago. Why are we getting the replay? No. So. It's, it's well, I'm not a huge fan of the way Doug has ap approached this game. Huh. Uh, no pun intended. Um, 
it's working for him. He's going to get the job done. And he still has the backup plan of the approach of the Second Sons. But when you're playing slow control decks like this, you do want to make sure you value the clock. You want to make sure you uh, use your time effectively. And a lot of times just getting to say, I win the game is a good way to use this clock because these last two games, Alex is going to turn into more of a control deck. And so we're going to play longer games. We're going to have some larger stacks. We're going to have some counter wars that are involved. So him taking the time to play this game out for an extra five turns, extra six turns, that's that might come back to bite these players. Um, it's possible they w could end up with a draw because of it. It's possible that uh, maybe... Maybe Doug is going to the uh, Lantern School of Thought and trying to win 1-0. I, I don't know if you guys saw that article. There was an article on Reddit from a Lantern player who was basically like, eh, these are all the ways you can take abs an absurdly long time without breaking the magic rules as written. I, I thought it was really stupid. I don't advocate doing that at all. I think that's a gross... Uh, what, four strong the round or... Not four strong. Not four strong, but so, time. yeah, it's essentially, it was an article about how to waste time with Lantern within the rules, not getting a war warnings for, like, slow playing, not getting warnings for stalling. Yeah. I mean, like, um, I feel like that's something that only the pros should do. And then, No, I don't know. The, all the pros were like, no, this is a horrible idea. They don't did? do this, okay, yeah. cool. But it was like... I mean, that's what I think should happen. One of the things is, like, I, I'm not even going to say them because I don't want to encourage it at all. Yeah, you if, good, if all of you really care, you can go find their art article on Reddit. But I kind of hope it was removed because it's just kind of dumb. Yeah, I feel like that's something that even if you do like understand how to, you just like it shouldn't be something that is put out yeah. there. But yeah, I definitely think this is a deck that Doug is newer to. Maybe not uh, control in general. It feels like he's playing uh, as a control deck very well, but I think he's not exactly used to this whole combo control. Like, see, the Gearhawks didn't matter. This, these two approaches just won the game. So, but that's going to be game one, as I expected, going to dog over Grixis. Yeah. Um, the real interesting part of this match is going to be able to see how these players sideboard, how these players uh, play the next two games, how Alex, the biggest thing is on Alex, does he board in things like duress, does he have duresses, negates, uh, maybe spell pierces. Doomfall? Maybe some doomfalls, some planeswalkers, some more resilient threats. I would, uh, I've seen Grixis lists that play... Uh, searches in their sideboard. It's a really good card in this matchup. Um, and it's really nice to be able to kind of make Doug's uh, Wraths not as important. Make his cast outs not as important once you flip as Kanta. So we'll see. I don't know the uh, the exact Alex exact list. But that's going to be the really interesting thing to watch with this match. While these players are sideboarding, guys, I just want to thank you first for joining us here tonight on this uh, beautiful Wednesday night. Um, I don't know how it is wherever you guys are, whether it be in Ohio like us or, I don't know, we've had people watching from Switzerland. So if any of you are watching from Switzerland, thank you. I hope you guys yeah. get uh, enough sleep for your upcoming day. But if you guys do like what you're seeing right now, there's multiple ways you can follow us on social media. There's Facebook, there's Twitter, there's Instagram. Uh, all of those are on our website at topdeckproductions.com. Um, we also ask that if you do like you're seeing, you want to help maybe uh, support the stream a little bit, get us, help us get some more new equipment, get some better light. We're working on mobile rig so we can go to different stores, get different players, get... Uh, Maybe some other formats where, like, maybe, like, Legacy has more of a fun. We don't have a great Legacy following here, but I do know in places like Dayton, they have a really big Legacy following. Down in Kentucky, they have a decent Legacy following. So, yeah, there is two ways you can do that. You can either donate via Twitch, sub via Twitch, or become a patron at patreon.com slash topdeckproductions. Yeah, if you guys just want to take time to check that out, we would really appreciate it. We actually have a commentator camera coming soon. So you can see all our beautiful faces, or lack thereof, yeah, let's, in the uh, case of... Let's just put a mirror in front of case the two of us. Uh, yeah, and then also, if you guys uh, want to tune in on Saturday, we have our standard PPTQ that we're streaming. So if you guys want to come out, if you're in the 
Midwestern area, Cincinnati area. Uh, so you can come here, play in that, try to win. You're invited to the for the team pro tour, so you can win for your buddies. I know I have a couple. Oh, I don't have friends, so that's okay. gonna be hard for me. Uh, I'll be commentating with uh, one Robert Meadows. Yeah, unfortunately, Robert replaced me. Uh, yeah, um, but I know I'll be commentating. I have some friends that will be playing in that that I'm hope kind of hoping wins. So I guess I I won't be the most biased person. Won't be the most impartial person to be commentating. But you know, it is how it is. We go live at one o'clock just for that. So if you guys clear your calendars. Uh, we can you can watch Legacy action on StarCityGames.com until then, if you're into Legacy. I think Legacy is a cool format. It's interesting. I know that it's a le format I would actually really love to get into if I had access to some of those cards. Yeah, I mean, I tried to build a Legacy deck, and I, I have it, most of Reanimator, but it's not really the deck it, I want to be it, playing. It ended up just being like degenerate decks, like Manalus Dredge, mm -hmm. and like as much as I wouldn't mind playing that. I know that all the legacy players around here play like Leyland of the Void and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, so it's just no game. Like, Dredge I is a, actually enjoy Dredge it. is a deck that in Reanimator that people are all, always going to be running for. Everyone's going to have surgicals on their board. Everyone's going to have things like Graft Excursion on their board. The deck that I really want to build that uh, I think I'm going to try to build next is uh, Turbo Depths. I think that deck is really cool. I think that deck has a lot of play to it. And sometimes you just kill people 2020s, man. Like, I think it's... I love. I actually love that deck because it's one of the most fair that I've seen. Like, it's not... Why are we calling Turbo Depths fair? Because, I mean... Miracles just, is fair. You just remove the creature. Like... It's indestructible. Path. Swords. Eh. It, other, uh, you bounce it. Sylvan <laughs> Safekeeper. Give it Shroud. That seems... Great. Excessive. It does seem great, but it seems excessive at the same time. All right, so we're going to game number two here between these blue decks. Back we'll to see. this other format. So is, is that a is that negate in Doug's hand? Probably. I hope that is, because the other card I thought it was was Soul of the Rapids, and I'm it'd be very confused if he brought in Soul of the Rapids in his board. Um, That'd be insane. Is that a card? It's five that mana, three two flyer hex. Hex no. Yeah, like, I've, I've never, never seen, seen that, that played in standard. Yeah. I don't know, well, like that oh, middle no. card next to the approach. Yeah, I, I certainly know what that card is because draft is a draft. I think is it's a just a negate. Thing. There's no way that's um, just not not a negate. It's probably it is, could it be an ex essence scatter? No, I don't think so. Okay, I I don't know arts very well, surprisingly, because I am the person to identify cards by their art. So we have a good start from Alex here. He's got his premier two drop into duress. So we're gonna see. We're gonna see all what's in all in Doug's hand right yeah, now. I think it's a glimmer. Hmm. Are Are you talking about this card? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's definitely a negate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, yeah, we're gonna negate the dress. That's probably good. Uh, Doug has a copy of Approach in his hand, so he wants to protect that. He's got a copy of Glimmer in his hand. He wants to protect that. But he has not found a way to deal with this glimmer. I uh, not glimmer. Uh, Glen sleeps Siphoner. and so this is one of the weaknesses of blue white approach. Did uh, Alex not pay? Maybe he didn't. Maybe he wants to use energy for something this turn. Oh, well, I, I maybe guess. he just. It doesn't. Seem uh, bad, it's possible but... he doesn't have another play. In I mean, will he have to discard a hand size? I don't think so. He shouldn't have to. I don't know. He m We're gonna see a field of ruin here. That I don't f know how I feel about that. Uh, so Doug, I actually don't think has another blue source in his hand. Oh, okay, that makes a little more sense. So that makes sense. Um, Doug may also not be familiar with searches being Grix's sideboards. Again, I don't know if that's a card that Alex has in his sideboard. Um, but if it is, then. Doug might get punished for firing off this field of ruin. I I mean I don't think Alex will have a problem filling this graveyard otherwise. No, no, I gotta know. Um So we'll see what's gonna happen. But I wonder if Doug is playing any copies of Baffling End. I played a lot of Blue White Approach just when uh Rivals of Ixon came out because of the card Baffling End. You know what that does? Uh yes. The yeah. uh, O ring kind of the not, oh, silk not wrap even. effect yes, of it the just set. exiles it and then you yes. get a, a dinosaur. So we'll see what happens here, but Baffling End is definitely a card that Doug would like to find here if he has access to it. That's a two drop, right? It is a two drop. Okay. So 
but it, more importantly, just it shored up the weakness of Blue Wood Approach in the fact that you could answer early game creatures. A lot of the times you'd have to play cards like Aether Meltdown I or... Um, actually, it was just Aether Meltdown. There was no better options. Yeah. There's no there's no anything like Blessed Alliance or Immolating Glare in Standard right now. Expect we're going to see... So we Negate. Maybe there should be in here. Glare. Like, I feel like that's just kind of a card. Like, no. Yeah, let's put that in here. Whoa, whoa. What? Order. Whoa, what, what is what happening? What if Alex find? I, so I think Alex said hit yours is going to resolve, and so he... Okay. Uh, I mean, I don't they mind They did it at the same time. I was but just very confused. Alex, what if you found a Spell Pierce? Now, he may not run Spell Pierce, I don't but think that's worth Spell Pierce. Is it? I would. I Wouldn't you just Spell Pierce the approach he forces? Eh. I guess, I guess Judge Dobby So, Doug thing. has no way to answer this Glint Sleep Siphoner. This is evident. Let's yeah. make sure he doesn't find a way to answer this Glint Sleep Siphoner. I guess that's fair. Ooh, did we find a Baffling End? Nope. No, we found Search. Yeah. All right, Search is pretty good. Search is fine here. But the most important thing about what Alex did is he let Doug know, I don't have Spell Pierce in my deck. And Spell Pierce, when you're playing Blue Water Approach, is a card you really have to worry about out of these blue decks, even if they have it or not. Because if they have one blue mana open and you just tap out for approach, sometimes you just die to spell pierce, and you really want to do your best to either play around that if you can, which normally you can't at a blue approach, or if you're the Grixis player, at least try to represent spell pierce. So I've also I've I've heard that by a couple of people, and I kind of think the opposite. So when people say that. I think that it's not as much as that he's not playing with it as much as I'm not going to spell pierce that. I'm going to spell pierce something more important. And I try to avoid, like, that kind of, like, oh, you don't have it. So that kind of thing. And, I mean, I play that way. Like, if you attack me with a large creature, I might not path it immediately, but I'm probably going to path it eventually. And I just, like, I don't well, want to fall into that pit trap where the opponent's like, oh, you don't have it. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so... But with what Alex did there, he's saying that even if I draw... Spe like, he's saying, I'm not going to cast Spell Pierce. But even if you have Spell Pierce, you at least want to have your opponent think about it in your deck. And yeah. that Glimmer of Genius is like... Doug is not under that much pressure right now. So he can wait till something like turn nine to cast his second approach and be able to pay for spell pierce or anything like that so you at least want doug to be thinking about spell pierce the entire time and then he might make some decisions where you have to play around it and it's not even that you have to like do stuff like think really long a really long time before after every time they cast a non-creature spell if you just have to tap like all but one of your lands, and it doesn't matter what colors they are, leave up a blue blue land. Yeah. Maybe just leave up an island. Maybe just leave up a drowned catacomb. I guess that way, good. if you just keep leaving up one blue mana, you're just going to like get into your opponent's head. They're going to be like, okay, why does he keep leaving up one blue? Why does he keep leaving up one blue? Uh, it must be Spell Pierce. Even if you have it or not. I guess that's fair, because I don't think when I play Magic. Eh. I, I recommend doing it. Uh, no, I play green. Okay. Oh, <laughs> is that you, that's Nezahal the Primal Tide? Oh, I love that card. This is the new control trump. And who doggy is he it? A is, big uh, one. Cannot be countered, right? He that's cannot be countered. So he's a seven mana seven seven. Okay. Can't be countered. Whenever your opponent casts a non-creature spell, draw a card. You have no maximum hand size. You can discard three cards, exile Nezahal, return it to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. Neat. It's really, really good. But we're going to play Approach. It looks like Mystic Remora finally grew up. Why are we not playing Nezahal? Um, I would slam this Nezahal every think, time. Do you think Doug could be worried about removal? Nezahal or, doesn't care about yeah, removal. that's fair. Now, so Doug did draw a second Approach off of the Glimmer, I believe. So now if Alex tap out, taps out, he dies. I don't. I just don't think Alex is in a good position here. No, he's not. Like, but I would have just slammed as a whole. Yeah, that's Alex such a hard card for Alex to deal hole. with. So you have the Scarab God. Scarab God. 
That's um, nice. Does Alex have a counter spell in hand? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, he has a. Uh, he has torrential, but... Hey, Alex, you're dead! Congrats. Uh, Doug's getting a little fidgety because he realized he just won. So. Yeah. Uh, He's going to show him the he approach. He didn't need to draw the card. He didn't need to draw yeah. the card. Just, if that wasn't a I'm casting approach. That was I'm showing you approach. Yeah. And you can scoop or we can go to the next one second. Uh, yeah. And cat play I this guess approach. But yeah, so if you're playing a blue deck, pack Nezahal. Nezahal's very good in blue, blue, against blue decks. What if you're playing Merfolk? Okay, I do not consider blue, Merfolk a blue deck. I guess that's very fair, because it's just a green deck with blue. Cards. Especially in standard. It is a green deck that has a green-blue card. Sorry, two green-blue cards in Mistbinder and Kumena. A Silver Gull Adept. And then it has Unsummons. I mean, that's like that's like 12. Like Sometimes cards, there's uh, Nissa Steward of Elements, at least in the board. I love that card Kurt's so much. Card's very good. Three mana walkers, man. Three mana walkers. Just, like, in Commander. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, yeah. Played it for seven earlier. It did, like, one thing. But yeah. it just felt great sitting there. But, yeah, so that's going to be it for this round. Um, we're, We will try to find you guys another uh, feature match. But if we can't do that, we'll see you guys in around 20 minutes for our final round of our Wednesday Night Standard. And we'll be back. And just saying, guys, don't go anywhere. Bye.